Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Exploring Minds with Bobby Mack. This object, the object of this show is to speak to other philosophically minded people in an unassuming way as we tackle some of life's biggest questions. And today I am joined once again by the indispensable, irreplaceable Caitlin Bryant as we speak to probably the most unique guest that we've had. Uh, today I will really have to exercise the mission statement of this podcast, emphasize the word unassuming, going to try to cast off all my presuppositions as we speak to Mark Sargent. Uh, Mark is one of the world's foremost proponents of the uh, flat earth model. And Mark, how's it going? <laughs> it's going pretty well. I don't know if I'm the foremost, but if you get into the topic, there is a high degree of probability that you will run into my stuff first. Uh, I, if, if, um, if Flat Earth was a, a college course, if it was, well, Flat Earth University, I would be the 101 book. There you go. You're I'm the, the freshman only, recruiter. Yeah, you're one of the <laughs> only people who, if you do look at the Wikipedia article for the Flat Earth model, you're one of the only people's names that come up. I'm in it? I didn't yeah, even know I was, I didn't have, know I was in the wiki thing for Flat yeah, Earth. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Nobody tells me anything. <laughs> it's just whatever. Okay. So, so just before we start, let's just get our facts straight. So right. what do you believe about the shape of the earth? I believe, let's start with what I don't believe. Okay. I don't believe that we are on this tiny rock covered with a little bit of water and even less bit of smoke that is spinning and flying through the impossible universe in all sorts of velocities and directions. I believe we are in a building, a structure, uh, with walls and a floor and a ceiling, like a snow globe or a planetarium or a terrarium, a pizza box, whatever you want to call it. And that it was so big and so complex and so outside our realm of understanding that we did our best and brightest didn't figure it out till about 1960. And when they did, that would be the United States and the Soviet Union. And when they did, they said, yeah, we're not going to tell anybody. We're going to keep this under wraps, for lack of a better term, for as long as we can. And they did. It was brilliant. Everything they've done so far has actually been really, really well done. And so here we are. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing. One more thing for the details on the inside. Because I know people are like, okay, fine. You describe the, the, the outside of it. Uh, the inside. Uh, so... Inside this building would be a giant saltwater lake. And in that giant saltwater lake are a bunch of little islands, which would be our continents. The sun and the moon are inside the structure. They are very, very small and uh, float around above us like a mobile above a child's crib. And um, it's a pressurized system. I don't know if there's anything else, so but I'm sure sun, you have questions. Sorry, the, the, sorry, the sun and the moon are inside the dome then? most likely I, I can't confirm if they're if they're even two-dimensional or three-dimensional only that they're completely independent the sun okay. is like an incandescent light bulb and the moon is like a led laser basically okay. it's, it's it doesn't reflect anything it generates a cold light but we can get into that as we get into this how much time do we got by the way i didn't um, even ask about an hour but we're flexible right, cool. depending on what you're all is. right we'll, um, just, we'll just go with it so so it's a disc though you're saying yeah, it's completely flat from okay. one edge to the other. Of Just, course, there's mountains and valleys and little stuff. But yeah, the, yeah, the but edges, like, a, yeah, like the edges line up with each other. And what about just, the uh, what about the other planets? Yeah, lights on a ceiling. That that's all they are. Um, if you guys and I, I, I don't know if you have a planetarium anywhere close to you, but I, I just recommend to people if you haven't been to a planetarium, please go. When you look at it inside of a planetarium, do you see Jupiter? Yes, you do. Does it look spherical? Yes, it does. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, it's because it's just a projection up on the ceiling. What's the difference? When you walk out of that planetarium, who's to say you're just not in a much, much bigger planetarium? So, so you're suggesting that the solar system is like... Are, are you suggesting that the planetarium is sort of like manufacturing the, this perception or are you saying oh yeah yeah like, yeah absolutely the, like, they're, so they're the, they're creating this illusion kind of or participating in and when you say they I, we're, uh, we are not talking about us we had nothing to do yeah i would do want to get into who you think they yeah. is but, the, but for the time being we'll call them they they some, some yeah group the, that the, en group. the engineering of this is far beyond what what we have uh, in all aspects i mean obviously but come on 
is it that much of a stretch? We didn't even have HD televisions 20 years ago. So if you were to, you know, show our tech to someone from even 50, show this cell phone to somebody 50 years ago, see what happens to them. Mm-hmm. The head will explode. Um, but yeah, the solar system, basically the illusion was created by whoever built this place and done for a very, very deliberate reason. And I don't know if you guys actually watched the clues or if you just watched the documentary, but because they didn't really go into the clues that much, which is you have to create the illusion of the solar system because up until about 500 years ago, just about every culture drew the same thing, which was a snow globe. Well, that's not going to work after a while, because if, after a while, if you, you know, as your technology gets better and better, it's like, oh, there's an edge, there's an edge, there's an edge. And you know, once the internal combustion engine kicks in, people are just going to head straight for it, which they did. You know, that's, the, that's what the government did almost right away once we had decent engines on planes. And so you have to, the, the only way is to get rid of the edge. You tell them there is no edge, no edge at all. It's a ball. You can go around it and around it and around it and around. You're never going to find the edge, so don't even try. It's amazing how effective it was. 99.9% of the people don't even think about it. It's good. Okay. Can I just so ask one other question about yeah, the structure of this? One other question? You've got a hundred questions. Yeah, Go. I, I, I do. Yeah. But, uh, so do you saying that, so this snow globe type structure, yeah. uh, is this the entire universe then? For our intents and purposes, yeah, it is. It is our, our universe. And I know that, that, that some people don't take the hell there's people in our community that don't take it well you're shrinking the entire universe down basically to a one-room studio apartment yeah i but it's a really really big nice studio apartment i mean it's very very pretty just because you don't have billions of light years or millions of light years whatever it is often any given direction doesn't mean that it's less significant i mean the this everything up in the sky is just an ornate clock system that predates language that's all it really is it doesn't in fact i had somebody come to me Oh God, like in the first three months, says, aren't you killing astrology? Not astronomy, but astrology. And I said, no, no, not at all. I mean, if you want to think you're a double Gemini with a bad moon rising, fine. It doesn't change. It's just more intimate. <laughs> okay, so like, and, and one I do have more questions. So like, like I also read on your, your website that like you, because gravity is kind of a problem under this paradigm, right? Where like, if right. you have like a, you know, sphere, you've got this like large mass, which is sort of drawing everything inward, which is how we have gravity. And it's my understanding. Stop, stop. Okay, okay, all right, all right. No, no, how, how do you know that? The every so, main so, main... No, 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 no. I got to stop you because every mainstream scientist says the same thing. I'm not trying to be rude. Yeah, yeah. Every, every mainstream scientist, including, oh, I don't know, the, the most popular scientist in the world, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson, which we'll get into, says that we can't, mainstream science cannot tell you what gravity is. They can only tell you what it does because mm-hmm. they can't replicate it. So, what do you mean but, by they can't replicate it? Can you create artificial gravity right now? Tell me a university can do that. Can't. Hmm. I mean, you can do sort of like simulated gravity. Nope. Simulated is not the same thing. Computer simulated well, I mean, gravity. It's, all right. Well, we're going to get like, into this also, like, so you're okay, going to tell okay. me. Like, I don't want to worry. So, but, but like, stipulate, I'll, I'm willing to sort of, I'm trying to be as open-minded as possible just to understand your point. What's, so, like, okay, what's the difference like, between gravity on a globe and gravity on a flat earth? Right? Right, exactly. Like, how are we experiencing whatever the phenomenon is of things going downward? That's all we're trying to, yeah. yeah, Gravity on a globe would be, again, we're going to use mainstream science. They say it's this magical molecular force that's pulling things down to the center of a sphere. In the flat model, we say it's a magical molecular force that's just pulling things straight down. Mass may or may not have anything to do with it because the other thing that factors in is a pressurized system, which is buoyancy. And granted, it's not all buoyancy. There's some flat earth people that are absolutely adamant. It's like, it's only buoyancy, which means if it's a pressurized system that, you know, things raise and fall depending on density. But no, I I absolutely believe there is something along the lines of gravity, but it's not that much different than what's on a globe. Let's see. I read on one website, though, that there's a suggestion that there's like a, a universal accelerator. Like no, something no, that's just... no, 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 oh, no. Th- wait, this is, on, this is on one of your guys'. I guess it's not my side and not a speaker's yeah, guy. Yeah, okay, no, no, okay. No. This, not... is, this, is, this is the, I don't know, it says like the Flat Earth Society. Do you, do we have nothing to do with the actual Flat Earth Society. Okay, they're, they're, oh, okay. I didn't know we, that. We, All right, Flat Earth right. Society, they're the old guard. If, if Flat Earth was software, we would be 2.0. I we see. have nothing to do with the Flat Earth Society. That whole acceleration thing through space, 
the reason why we have a problem with well, several reasons why we have a problem with it. One is that we they're taking into account space. You know, it's like, oh, it's go, what's going nine meters per second per second, whatever it is in, a, in one particular. And it's this flying asteroid. It's basically the flat Earth is an asteroid. We're saying what asteroid? You could be literally sitting in a snow globe on somebody's desk. So you think it's like fully stationary, no rotation, no upward Nothing acceleration, moves. Just, nope. a, just a pressurized dome kind of like levitating in, in no, it's not levitating it's just sitting somewhere it's okay does it need to like rest on something though or sure. like 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 what is the conceptualization of like what is outside the dome basically uh, you want to get to that already all right, yeah, that's fine. Be all right. no 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 it's good uh, because you got to remember from our standpoint we don't know what's outside of this i mean i can speculate all day long i mean i've got some great theories on what exactly is outside of here but i try to live one world sorry I try to live one world at a time. So if we're in some sort of pressurized snow globe, and I, there's, there's two things. One, I don't think for a second that we're the first people to rent this apartment. Civilizations, our history only goes up back unbroken 5,000 years. We know full well there are civilizations that predate us. Nobody wants to talk about it. I also don't think that it's a one-off. So I, you know, we could be in a snow globe sitting next to 100 other snow globes or 1,000. Okay. Doesn't, really, doesn't really matter, though, because no one's getting out. How's that? I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Um, Bobby, do you okay, have any so, follow-up? Yeah. Questions? Yeah. So I have to. So, so yeah. So when I first heard about this theory, I mean, of course, when anybody hears about the flat Earth model, they, the tendency is to go. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, Me too. So, I mean, at, at, every yeah. tides, full moon seasons, equators, poles, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Everybody in our community is the same thing. I hated flat Earth. I mean, I, if you mm -hmm. I, the thing in the documentary was not a lie. Every the T-shirt literally reads, "I became a flat Earther because I tried to disprove it." Everybody hates it. Nobody. I have never met a single person. It's like a flat Earth. That's a great idea. I'm going to go with that. I hammered on this thing for months, and then finally I said, "You know what? Internet hive mind." It's, it's creative. It's clever. I'm just going to throw this. I, I'm, I'm going to go the other way. I was like, you know what? I don't think it's a globe anymore. Here's why. Boom, 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 boom. And the response I got back was not what I expected. It was... Wait, so, wait a minute. So are you saying then that pre-internet, there was not a hive mind that the earth was a globe? What? Like you wait, no, 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 no. I'm saying, but we didn't have access to the hive mind before the internet. I see. I see. You're I'm using you, the you hive didn't. mind no, to no, no, undermine no, no, no. the no. Global Although global that theory. that's a great that's a great point. I've got to bring this up because I, I put this um, little quote in the description box of every video I make. It's from George Orwell, and he wasn't a flat earther, but he was talking about how people believe. Again, I'm not knocking on science. I love science. We're talking on science. I'm not anti-science, but he was talking about how people trust science implicitly, no matter what they say. And he wrote this in 1946. He says, you know, when you ask anybody on the street how they know the world is a globe, the, the, the answer is almost immediate. It's, it's a knee-jerk response. It's, what are you talking about? We, we know. It is known, Game of Thrones. It's a known thing. It's a given, like algebra. And then you say, really? How do you know? And people start, the wheels start spinning. And then it starts messing with people. You got to remember, in 1946, that was 12 years before NASA was even founded. How did everybody know in, in 1946 that it was a globe? They didn't. I mean, I believe like ancient societies actually were even able to prove it mathematically. Pro mathematically proving something isn't actually proving something. Meaning until you can get high enough with a rocket to see it, what do you really know? Science. So is that's, that's your standard of evidence is you need to be able to like see, like what if you flew a plane around it and like various kind of circumnavigation efforts? You can move your finger around a dinner plate and you technically have circumnavigated the dinner plate. Is that dinner yeah, plate? Yeah, but I'm, I'm willing to believe that our math and like navigation technologies are, are good enough that like you could figure good, out. Like, good enough. So science is never wrong. Science never makes mistakes. No, yeah, so but that's I think a, that's a, all right. Yeah. That's a quote from your book. You know, so I'm reading the, the description of your book. Uh, Which one? Flat, flat Earth Clues, The Sky's the Limit. Oh, that, that was the first one. You should read the second one, End yes. of the World. The description of it on Amazon.com is saying, you thought it was true because children don't believe in lies, and you grew up, and it was still true because science is never wrong. Right. And then you bring up these things, you say, except for small things like lead gasoline, lead paint, DDT, cigarettes not causing cancer, and what the core of the earth looks like. I don't um, forget asbestos, uh, radioactive paints, and all bunch of other stuff. Oh, and right. the sea, 
Helicanth fish, which was one of my favorites. Now, is this actually science or is this, because I mean, science is just a methodology. And I think that we're going to have different definitions on what counts as science. Because I think that what, what the general about, public, how about this? How, what the general public thinks science is. Science is a broad stroke when it comes to the general public. If you want to go into the minutia of it, we'll be here all day. The scientific method, does Flat Earth believe in the scientific method? Oh, yeah, you bet we do. Test, observe, repeat. Pretty simple. But when it, but what I'm saying is that science is corruptible and can be tied to a conspiracy like anything else. We all know there's conspiracies in politics and business and sports entertainment. And yes, even journalism and yes, even science. Science will take the money to cut corners, especially for stockholders, which is why I brought up lead paint, lead gasoline, asbestos, DDT, all the variations of DDT and so on and so on. Okay, so, so you think that like, is it all or most scientists or like, like, how far up does this conspiracy go then, right? Because, like, I would say anyone who's really, nearly anyone who's calling themselves a scientist, especially in, like, physics, is, is going to say that the Earth is round and that there is a solar system and a universe and all, of all course, those things, of right? Course. And so, like, are they all part of the conspiracy? No, no, or, no. Or, like, how, where's, like, the upper level of Oh, that? no, no. Yep, great question. And which is, people say, well, this is so big that you're talking about every pilot and every scientist and every astrophysicist and every radio telescope operator and so on and so on. It's like, no, no, no. This isn't like uh, the Manhattan Project where we had, oh, God, 100,000 people in the United States refining uranium for, you know, the first atomic weapons, and it was actually kept a secret. It was good. Of course, the information was different back then. This isn't like that. This is the ultimate in need to know. This is so big that you don't want to tell anybody. I mean, you compartmentalize as best you can, and you don't tell anybody. In fact, uh, NASA, for example, people say, well, you're saying all of NASA. No, 99% of NASA doesn't know anything about anything. They make the fuel systems, they polish capsules, they mop the floors, they do whatever, they collect the paychecks. Only the telemetry guys need to know. Uh, a great example of that would have been, uh, and I'll use movie references every once in a while because it's a pop culture world, uh, which would be Capricorn One. Great independent film from the late 70s where they faked a Mars mission. And they were basically showing that during this faking of a Mars mission, nobody in NASA knew except for the telemetry guys. Telemetry meaning, when the rocket gets off past visual distance, well, where is it? Well, the telemetry guys will tell you. It's like they'll say mathematically it's here or it's here. Well, all you have, they can make up any numbers they want. So, hmm. so uh, sorry, the short version is so almost... So like nobody, passionate no. scientists who like escalate to that position are like kind of initiated somehow to... No, no, to no, no. Ast and no. No, I mean, there's what, 10,000 astrophysicists in the world right now? None of them need to know anything. Neil deGrasse Tyson, definitely don't tell him because you want him acting natural. Same with Brian Cox, same with Michio Kaku. Uh, no, but again, I think the, the broader point here, though, is why are we keeping them in the dark? Yeah, like who oh, no, no. actually does know, though, and like why are they so Why invited, keep it a like, secret? Yes. Why keep it a secret? Yeah, okay. like why are they so motivated to like have this really elaborate illusion? I, it's not that okay let me, we'll start with why why do we keep it a secret why when the united states and soviet union figured it out in 1960 why didn't they tell everybody and, and journalists have asked me this for several years now and i tell them and I, I i try to be as blunt as i can i say okay so you'd break the story you would tell you would go to the u.n and you would have them announce to everyone that the world isn't what they think it is Think about this yeah. for a second. Academ well, real, real fast. Academically, uh, forget about astrophysics and astronomy. Forget about that. We're talking about the rest of the physical sciences. Um, geology, hydrology, biology, archaeology, anything with an ology, right? Have to be retooled literally from the ground up. And that's every university in every country. Academic nightmare. Uh, economics. It's an oh, academic breakthrough. Like, like nightmare. Yeah, there's plenty of disruptive things in academia. <laughs> oh, do it work. I, I, I know academically you're saying the, like the truth should come out. I get it. I get it. Right. It, information. But also, like, like why is that so? So, are you saying they're not doing it though because it would be bad or like it would be disruptive to those fields? It is. Well, the shock waves would be incredible. Are you kidding? Yeah. Uh, the world, world markets would have to be suspended for months to determine what it means. And, but the big one, the big one would be the, the religious. Look, the, the, old, the age old battle between science and religion, right? The five major religious houses, um, Buddhism, Judaism, Hinduism, Islam, and Christianity. You were giving them leverage against science simultaneously and you're telling them to show restraint? 
against an institution, science that's been beating them over the head with textbooks for five centuries? Oh, no, 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 no. That is a short Illuminati meeting. Okay, so, I can tell you. So wait, they it, don't want to give religious people more power, you're saying? That, that is a, yeah, exactly what you're I'm saying. saying. You, you, do they're, not, they're you do not okay. tell, you can't, you can't do it because they wouldn't stop Otherwise, there. The, the church would go on an attack and they would say, oh yeah, okay, so you're, you were wrong about this. What else are you wrong about? Oh, how about evolution, carbon dating, the Big Bang, dark matter? We'll go on and on and on and on. Well, and I mean, like if your theory is right, it looks like we should be reevaluating all of those things. I like you and yet I'm worried for you <laughs> because, <laughs> because it, no, it's a great, no, it's a great idea in theory, but the, it's, it's, it's too much. Look, people in power, one of the rules of power is you don't risk anything. You never, ever leave anything to chance. Never, ever, ever, ever. Which means in, in this sort of case, this, look, civil, I'll give you the short version. By 1960, we didn't even figure this out for sure because we just didn't have the tech to figure it out until about 1960. Not coincidentally, that's when NASA was getting started. So when, if that hap when, when that happens, civilization's already built, right? Concrete is already hardened. That's it. You're, we're not going back. It's the same reason why if there was a substitute, a perfect substitute for oil, right now you can't introduce it into the civilization because there would be entire sectors which is collapse because we've got so much stuff that is dependent on petrochemicals it's just something you can't do you've seen this in x files all the time it's like oh yeah an engine that runs on water yeah put him in a box you're never going to see that guy again so yeah it's a great idea in theory but no even i look and i'm i'm one of those different conspiracy guys i believe in the greater good which is do the ends justify the means so would I have kept this a secret in 1960? Oh yeah, you bet I would. You bet I would. We were not ready, not even close. Look, hell, look what, look how ape everybody went when they even hinted that there might be aliens out there with that whole Roswell thing in 1947, which was only 13 years earlier. People started losing it to where the Pentagon just backtracked. It was like, nope, nope, nope. Uh, weather balloon, weather balloon. You're fine. You're fine. No, uh, you no, can't. Let, let, the let people, the people weren't ready in 1960. I think they might be ready now. I mean, which is why I think we're being allowed to do this. I, we're not doing this on our own. We have help. <laughs> but how did we? How did we discover this? Like, what the flat Earth? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like how? Oh, how did you mean how? How did what changed? Why now? Why? Why in 2015 did all of a sudden things just start ramping up? Or, um, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, in the beginning, like what, you're saying that there, there's always some small uh, elite group of people that knew about this and have been keeping it from the public for thousands of years. Or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but they couldn't wait, prove it. Wait, wait, like 50 years or like thousands of years, though? Oh, OK. So, well, that's just it. The old maps probably go back a long, long time. But as, as I, I was telling somebody some some months ago. Now, let's say, for example, you were part of some super secret society. You know, first rule of power, you know, I don't care. Yes, we could go into like the Illuminati or the Bilderbergs or the Rothschilds or Council of, Council of Foreign Relations. Nobody knows who's on top. The first rule of power has never changed, which is stay hidden. The people with the real power, you're never going to figure out their names because that's you, you can't be the puppet masters and the puppet at the same time. But let's say somebody in a high, high position of power. Let's say the king of France, even though they can be overthrown. But say the king of France in 1500, let's say he had a wonderful map that showed exactly what the world looked like. What do you do with it? Nothing in 1500. You don't have the tech. I mean, literally for, for hundreds of years, they, I'm sure they, they knew about this, but they had no way. You have horses and you have wooden ships. You have nothing to do. You have no way to exploit this. You have no way to figure it out. So when we, our first rickety planes happened, you know, we were starting to get our first decent Navy planes. Um, Admiral Byrd in 1926, that was the, the first North Pole mission. 1926, it was a long time ago, 100 years ago. And immediately, I, they went and changed directions. Whatever they found at the North Pole, they said, oh, crap, we got to look down in, the, you know, down in Antarctica. And literally, they flew around Antarctica. The Navy ran nonstop missions. This is not secret. Nonstop missions from 1958 until Admiral Byrd's death in 1957. And right along the end, they were just looking for it, looking for the outer marker because it was way out there somewhere. And when I think they found it is when the Antarctic Treaty was put into place and they locked down Antarctica from corporations forever. The only unbroken, by the way, unbroken treaty in the history of treaties, which is mind boggling. Nobody even knows about it. And the PDFs all over the internet. You can find it anywhere.
So wait, sorry, I need a little bit of clarification. So like, okay, like, like people though in ancient societies were making observations and were sort of like coming to these sorts of conclusions based on like them looking at the sky with telescopes and sort of making like measurements. There's experiments that you can do with like wells and such mm, like yes, that. that yes, yes, yes. Right, right? So like they were forming it. these conclusions. Like, like I don't want to argue too much about the science, but like, like people were forming these conclusions. So was it the case that like, they just happened to be moving in the wrong direction or were like like elaborate kind of like groups like in power like this like actively trying to to deceive them and like things like the stars for example like are those part of the dome or are they like are they part of like the illusion that this like this you know un like Both, known group so, of so is sort of you had a few questions there um yeah. all of the above i'd say yes to just about everything so so wait, the, the group in power is making the, the stars? No, 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 no. The group in the power is nothing. They're not making the stars, but they can describe it any way they want. Meaning, okay. you know, remember, I'm not, we don't want to go into religion too much, but this, who told you that the sun was 93 million miles away? Who told you that the moon was 2,000 miles wide? That sort of thing. You can, you can say anything you want, anything with science. And what the, the saying I love, which is science is true until it's not. And uh, it's, but don't you think, so, so traditionally I understand that the way that we measure the distance of the sun from the earth is with the speed of light, right? Uh, that's now, not how I, I've heard that at all. <laughs> that's one of the ways uh, that, that, that how long it takes for the light to travel from the sun to the earth. But you're also making an assumption, again, where, where does the initial distance assumption come from but remember the sticks and shadows argument also works if the object is really really close and really really small you can do this with a flashlight in a, in a stick all day long so the sun can either be and any any physicist will tell you this its sun can be 93 million miles away and 400,000 miles wide or whatever it is i can't remember i keep screwing up kilometers and, and miles or it can be 3,000 miles away and only 50 miles wide it can but we both. can now conf but we can now confirm that through, through what trigonometric space? Through trigonometric the U.S. military, parallax. those guys. No, we can, <laughs> no, I, we can now confirm that with things like trigonometric parallax. We can measure the speed of light with ten different methods that all c confirm each other. We have telescopes that measure that can measure angles of light within one ten thousandth of a degree. Hmm. What you're not you're going to take out NASA from this? You're not going to use NASA at all? As, as a for what well, I, I would think that you that's you're, you're one of the first people it's like oh no we're, math math is the that's 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 your starting point not not nasa observations not the space station not the moon missions not mercury not gemini not voyager not pioneer i mean not you could of course you could talk about that as well of course you could talk about i mean i'm going to ask you about that as well i mean i clearly if the light if the moon is just a light then we didn't go there i don't you know, the, the, I don't know what the pictures from the uh, from the International Space Station are. If they are, I guess they're just childish forgeries. Can I attach a? Can I take an a, an image to chat or not? Yeah. Uh, let's they, see. We should be able to sort of send a like. I don't know if you can attach an. You can send definitely send a link though. Uh, I don't know if I can um. give you a link. I've got I've got an image right here. But I don't, I don't want to share. Why well, I may mean, I suppose I could share? You know what? I'm just going to give me one second. Okay. I will okay. just shoot it over to you in an email sent to Robert. One sec. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess I wasn't articulating my point a little well no, earlier. You were. I was talking about the speed of light being measured. I'm thinking like because we we even question we even question the speed of light. Sorry, we do. Okay. So yeah. like you're basically denying things, anything that you can't see. You're Not so anything we can't see, but anything that can't... you got to remember, I deal with the general public. I deal with the lowest common denominator. And there are many, many, many of them. And so when, when we were started this, the first thing, you know, I didn't even suggest to them, you know, go out to the beach with an HD camera, which is, by the way, the big game changer in all this. Oh, sorry. Did I send that to you? Shoot. Um, I haven't gotten it yet, but it might get uh, One second. Uh, I sent a, I sent it to, yeah, it's a two meg image of, I can, I'll send you links throughout this thing, but it's a two meg image of just Apollo 12, just a general, uh, 
General Paul Trump. But to answer your question, do it's not that we don't believe things that we can't see, but we question everything. And just because science puts their stamp on it doesn't mean it's right. Mm -hmm. And I can give you all sorts of fun, fun examples about that. Uh, like, here's a great one. If you want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level, great. I can go test that right now because I'm at sea level. And if I want to go up to mountaintop, I could also test that. You want to tell me what the core of the earth looks like? Wow, you're going to have a problem with that. Because we've all seen the one wonderful diagrams, right? You know, with red and orange and yellow and white, right? 4,000 miles supposedly drilled to the center of the earth. How do you know that exactly? What's the deepest hole ever drilled? Something like eight miles. Eight miles. Thank you very much. It's not 2,000. It's not 1,000. It's not even 10 miles. It's eight miles. The Germans and the Russians tried it for years and years and years. They couldn't get past eight miles. So why are you showing me a cutaway drawing of the earth with these perfect 1,000 mile bands? In fact, in wiki and different things, they're in the fine print, it says, we have no idea what's down there. So why don't you put a big question mark in the big, you know, inside the globe? Because science won't do that. Science won't do that. They'll say, no, this is what it is until they reverse it. And but then, then okay, this is the new what it is. Uh, and then, I, oh, wait, why are we seeing cutaway drawings of Saturn and Jupiter and every planet out there and suns? <laughs> tell, me, tell me what a cross-section of, of a blue giant is. How? How in the world are you doing this? Is there just th dark matter? Really? Really? I've met guys that are like, spending their entire lives on dark matter. It's, it's, it's a complete theory. You have no idea. Just, oh, we're trying to prove it. Now, but wait, but what, what I was saying before, oh, uh, oh yeah, about the, the core of the earth. I yes. don't expect you to have every answer to every single scientific question that's ever been posed, but uh, there has to be some kind of explanation for magma and lava being formed in volcanoes. I mean, maybe sure, it's artificial. Intense it's, heat and pressure. Yep. Artificial. It's all part of the, I mean, any group, let's put it this way, any, any entity any, we're talking, about, remember, we can only go one of two ways of this, which is it's either an older civilization that's much more powerful than ourselves or the divine, but really you're just kind of splitting hairs, aren't you? Because if a giant spaceship landed in Paris right now, a giant golden spaceship, you guys would probably come out and say, oh, wow, they do look like Avatar. Hey, pretty cool. Let's get a selfie. And there'd be other people that would start up churches for the tall blue people, Right. So when it comes to magma, for example, and I know it look in the clues, it, I did not get any friends when I, when I said this, I said, look, I said, everything is artificial. If you can build a dome like structure, that's thousands and thousands of miles wide, then you can create a magma system. It's not that hard. And actually it's probably beneficial because it keeps people from, keeps all the, the little critters from drilling down too far going up. That's one thing, but everyone can dig, you know, even older civilizations can dig. You don't want them digging too far. But what is, and so what exactly is this older civilization? Like when you say like we've been here before and there's this older civilization, what does that mean? What does that older mean? versions of us, for lack of a better term. Uh, I'm a huge believer that uh, every civilization only has a certain amount of time. You know, they, they, they go through their, their cradle to grave scenario. They peak out like we have and uh and at some point that that civilization either declines and i think there's something that happens at the end of this some sort of graduation god i hope it's not a cataclysm but you never know there's all sorts of fun stories about flood and fire and crap like that so older civilizations built this sure why not why not i mean we never we never created we never publicly released a unified field engine for example the engine that supposedly mythically powers all the, the spaceships supposedly flying around. So what if you had a civilization that could? What could you do with that? You could do amazing stuff. I mean, if you want, we're very limited when it comes. We have great information technology, but the, our physical stuff is very, very limited. And we have different vehicles for just about everything, which is different apparently from older civilizations. But what I'm, but none of this, none of nothing in your model seems to have predictive capability. I mean, it seems that you're starting with this idea, and then you're creating all these justifications for why there's lava and why there's, uh, you know, these fake photos from taken from outer space and all these artificial things. Sure. But the, but the power of the scientific method and every field of science, as you mentioned, biology, yeah. hydrology, geology, astronomy, and all of that, they yeah. can actually make predictions about eclipses and about other, sure. other, any celestial event you like. And you even mentioned that in your book. It's what's given us air conditioning. It's what powers this Zoom call yeah, yeah, yeah. right now. 
So, and thank you, by the way, for reading the book. Very few people do. <laughs> <laughs> Most people just call me about the documentary. Um, you, you're right. The predictive stuff. Yeah. Well, again, remember, first, we've only been doing this for five years. Uh, second is when it comes to the predictive stuff. Yes. No, science has made some wonderful things. F mapping out the, the sky and, you know, deciphering the clock system that it is. I mean, seriously, that's all it is. It's this giant ornate clock system. Great. Fantastic. Wonderful. You can predict some stuff. And yes, with some physics, yes, you can predict certain chemical reactions and certain temperature things and some things when it comes to thermodynamics sure but science tends to make as they've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger over the last five centuries they've jumped on you know making huge leaps of faith huge leaps of faith and the public just buys it they it's like you, if you it's seriously if you're wearing a lab coat my god you have credibility and it and it kills me because, you know, science, went, the difference, and I'm, not, I'm not angry at science. I'm just saying, look, you got to be accountable like everybody else, which is, uh, you know, when, when I make a mistake, fine, some people's feelings get hurt. When science makes mistakes, people die. I go. mean, science is wrong sometimes, but, like, to me, like, you're, you're pointing out that, like, science was wrong in the past doesn't really undermine it for me because science changed what's enough evidence like you can criticize it maybe for being a little bit too slow to change though i would say that that's a little bit ad hoc and that like what it probably looked like in the context of that moment is not pretty different than how we see it retrospectively but regardless like like i would say that science has like models like guesses kind of based on how we see the world and like based on the observations and what makes sense of the observations using the tools we have right now and sure. then they modify that when they realize that it was mistaken in some way and new evidence and they're pretty transparent about the reasoning for that usually well usually but what here i'll give you i'll give you a great little example i'll send this to you in right fact now. always I, I would i would actually implore you to to give an example where they aren't okay i just sent i just emailed you one the coelacanth fish one of my right. favorites <laughs> love it science does not like talking about this ugly fish the fossil records show that it's been extinct for 70 million years. Right. Abs and, and every scientist, every single scientist, because you guys are this wonderful tight-knit club, everyone would have bet the freaking farm that that was true, that it was absolute, put in a certificate you can frame, fact. And then they caught one off of Mozambique, and then another one off of Madagascar, and then South Africa, and then the second shot I sent you, that's National Geographic, they're swimming with them. And science had to backpedal. But the problem was, is they were absolutely, remember, scientists didn't find it. It was just some fishermen and the military that found it. And they were absolutely pushing against it. It's like, no, no, never happened, never happened. In fact, granted, when they first found it, it was uh, 1940. But it wouldn't have mattered if it was 1950 or now, because now it would have been worse. They would have said, oh, that's Photoshop. That's a fake video. That's CGI. That you just dig in your heels and you won't it, you won't go with it. You won't say, oh, it's absolutely wrong. In this case, they did. In fact, you had to make up new terms. It's like, oh, it's a, it's a living fossil. What? And it's in an evolutionary state of uh, stasis. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? You're just making up terms. It's like, well, it's science. I, well, hell, if we're going to go along down that road, let me throw, I'm going to throw one at you. Let me, let me take the offensive for, here for a second. The double slit experiment is basically akin to magic. It's absolutely unexplainable in the scientific world. But since it's repeatable, you guys put it underneath the scientific umbrella. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's science. It's a double slit experiment. Do you know what the hell's happening? No, we don't. But we can repeat it. So it's science. <laughs> it's like, what? I mean, really? I don't think it's quite like that or like what, what do you think is magic about it uh well one it one because we didn't even know what it meant until we started building software civil simulations which is a whole nother thing not only do i believe that the world is flat and enclosed but if it is flat and enclosed and i don't talk about this in the book necessarily not really i do in the second book which is uh that it's probably digital that we're probably in some sort of simulation and the double slit experiment screams that because but, what we wait so it's like so you think that like the refraction pattern of of light or like interference pattern sort of of light traveling through a slit is ma magic or like what what's magical about that part of it meaning it wasn't even remotely explainable until we started getting into advanced software simulations meaning scientists was making claims to it without 
any backing for it. I mean, you know, yeah, you can describe it all day long. The interference pattern, you know, particle versus wave. Do so you buy blah. that part of it? Oh, I absolutely. No, no, no. I absolutely buy that part. But you still can't explain why it's happening. It's like, well, when mm -hmm. we're looking at it, it's a particle. When we're not looking at it, it's a wave. Mm -hmm. That doesn't bother you in any shape or form? I agree that quantum stuff is weird and it's not something that I understand deeply. And, and when, but the thing is, when we started doing software, without even knowing when we were building software, I come from the software world, we started doing this on our own, which is basically it means if it's called flashlight graphics, which means if I'm not looking behind me, whatever's behind me isn't getting rendered completely. Because why would you render it? I'm not looking at it. And that had nothing to do with a double sit experiment. It just happened naturally. If your character doesn't go on the other side of that mountain, you don't build the other side of the mountain. It's like the old Westerns where you only have the fronts of, of stores and there's nothing, nothing behind it. So and, backing up a bit then for like the big picture, you think then that this is some kind of, it seems like you're suggesting that we're in some kind of simulation then? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I do. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, I do. I mean, between two things, between the double slit experiment, no question. I mean, watch the Thirteenth Floor if you have it, which is based on a German movie, which is based on a book from the '60s called um, Simulcron Three. Which is when you're building simulations, all of a sudden you have to question yourself. Once you're almost done with the simulation, it's like, wait a minute. You start questioning where you are right now. You know, depending on how good it is. But the other one, which I love so much, is um, neuroscience versus free will. That's a great experiment. You guys came up with it, which is the, you, know, you hook up electrodes to somebody's brain and you have them start typing stuff on the computer. And you look, it's like, okay, think of a number. And the second you hit, you think of that number, note the time and, you know, hit a button. So when you, when I say pick a number and you say three, right? And you just think of three. Well, apparently you didn't just think of three. The computer can already tell that you're ramping up to pick that number eight seconds ago. Right. Well, that's impossible. Not eight seconds ago. But no, that is eight seconds ago. Look it up yourself. Eight seconds. I think it's like 0.8 probably. Nope. It is a full eight seconds. Eight it seconds. Is freaks people out. And that screams predestination, which science hates. Again, this was your experiment, not ours. You wait, came wait, up wait, with hold it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Science hates predestination? I talk yeah, to a lot of materialistic philosophers and scientists that, that think that everything that's happening to us right now is a manifestation of just the velocity of the Big Bang and we're just following along those, that trajectory and we're just these meat bags that have no free will. That, I mean, well, it's, well, it's news to me. I, every scientist I have taught, every article I have read says science, just predestination is not something they want to look at. It's like free will. Again, what's, why it's called Please. neurosciences versus free will. You have no free will. But it, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. What? Are, are the but that's what scientists. What, that's what most scientists would say. What? That you don't really have free will. That's no, no, no. Most scientists, scientists would say that. you do have free will. They, uh, that is. I would say that they. There are not any scientists who do not think that the brain is just operating according to the laws of physics. Wait, or yes, very few but, scientists. But are and you... that that has the obvious immediate implication that there's nothing like spooky or metaphysical going on with regards to. Free no, 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 no. It's I'm just not, playing itself at all. Out. I'm saying that. In a perfect world, think about this, because we, we've seen this now only recently with social media. It's not that you don't have the freedom to make the choice. You already made the choice. It's more efficient. If you go into a simulation, just a free-for-all free, free for all simulation, that's not, that's not efficient in the slightest. What's way more efficient is if you, before you go into a simulation, I know we're getting off into the weeds here, but i got to mention this, you make all the choices ahead of time. And then you throw in a memory block just before you go in. And then it's perfect. It's no different than when, if you've ever seen kids, their kids are so lazy nowadays. You guys, I'm sure, are great. But um, they, they'll watch, instead of playing video games themselves, they'll actually watch a YouTube video of somebody playing a video game. Well, you got to remember that that little YouTube video takes up almost no bandwidth. It's tiny compared to the actual game. But they're getting the same thing out of it. They're watching it and the same sort of things are firing off in their head. It's like, oh, yeah, they get actually satisfaction from it. So what I'm saying is not only could it be a virtual, um, virtual simulation, but it could be a virtual movie, which is basically your path is already chosen before you even, you even go in. But again, we'll, we'll just get back to whatever else you got. I mean, Caitlin and I kind of believe that. Do you? Yeah, like most people in philosophy and science I know kind of believe that. Not in like a universe is like a sim simulation kind of conspiracy way, but like in a way that's perfectly consistent with like 
contemporary scientific ideas, just the universe is just playing itself out. My brain is just a set of neurons that are acting according to the laws of physics. And that's what's giving rise to what I subjectively experience as like decisions. And, and that's just all it is. And like most people I talk to in like science or some scientists, I guess you haven't thought about it like that, like outside of neuroscience or maybe a bit uncomfortable with it. Like just yeah, as regular people, you guys are like, that's, we, that's most people would agree with that. Well, we, we agree. And I think somebody, I, you know, I, I read a little bit of your, the what you sent me about what you guys do. You guys are a little different from the stoic science community that we have. You, you are, you are more open-minded, I think, than a lot of traditional people out there, which is good. I guess. Yeah, and, and I would also say that insofar as scientists and philosophers, scientists uh, don't believe in free will, uh, do believe in free will, they do so not because of scientific reasons. Yeah. They uh -huh. do so because of religious reasons or like Cable said. Yeah, the, yeah, you had a point there. There was a great quote, and I'm sure you've heard it many times. Uh, I think it's an Einstein quote that God doesn't play dice. And I had heard that years ago. And I didn't fully appreciate it until I started doing this. And then I kind of got it. It's not that God doesn't play dice. God doesn't know how to play dice because God wrote dice. Again, if you believe in that sort of that sort of logic, you know, that some if, if you believe in that that deity side, which is like, oh wow, that's actually pretty good. Einstein was a pretty quotable guy. A lot of, you know, he's got a lot of greeting cards out there. Yeah, do you think that Einstein was privy to this type of model? <sighs> Because the reason, the reason I'm asking is because he made one of the first predictions about an eclipse and said, yeah, he, yeah. he said, if I'm right, then this exact eclipse will happen off the west coast of Africa at this exact time and date. And he was right. Yeah, so. he. I, I don't think, no, no, no. I th God only knows really what was going on in his head. You're talking about a guy that could literally sleep at will and own 30 something of the same suit. Which I actually liked. I tried that one one year. I literally bought jeans and a purple t-shirt for an entire year just to see if I could do it. And I did. Um, but no, was Einstein privy to it? I don't know. He was, he, for me, he actually, he seemed more philosophical than he did any, it was anything else. I mean, he asked, he, you know, he had those wonderful quotes like, uh, you know, what, what will be the, what will we fight World War Three with? You know, that whole, you know, I don't know, but World War Four will be sticks and stones. Like, I don't know. When it comes to him, we don't you, we don't use him that often. Believe it or not, he doesn't come up much in conversation. Okay, so uh, just gonna plot along this treadmill of unexplained phenomena here. Okay, and I'm just going to ask, what about tides? Tide, with, which are explained by the moon's pull, and if you're, I, I, is it explained by the moon's pull, or is it just a coincidence that the moon happens to be in the right place at the right time, and then the tides move? I mean, that's a striking coincidence. Yeah, it is. It's also a striking coincidence that the moon fits exactly in front of the sun, that it's 400 times more narrow than the sun and 400 times closer than the sun. Also a big coincidence. But no, for me, the tides are just part of the physics engine that is this world, meaning the tides occur. The last thing you would do if you were going to build this world, again, I'm speaking about whoever engineered this thing, is create some powerful directional gravitational force from an object that's spinning above. It's way be, be way easier to do it from down below. That's how we do it in all our simulations. It's literally called a physics engine. So, okay, so there's just, so like phenomena that we're observing basically and finding explanations for, you think are are just sort of part of the programming of the system that are just oh, yeah. sort of like yeah, yeah. forced I mean, it's to a... happen that way. And then we're coming up with things that like are correlated like the position of the moon and sort of attributing it to that. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, all right. And, and so, like, who is, like, you refer to, like, they as, like, some people, like, or some, some entity, like, making these simulations. So are these, like, people in, in <laughs> power, or are they, like, a nah, like uh, thing? Are they aliens? Nah, I, I mean, I, like, who is, who is making the simulation that is, like, apparently a very, very smart being, whatever they are? And well, even if it's not, I would also add, even if it's not humans that are engineering it, uh, some humans have to know about it. Some humans have yeah. to really yes. know what's some, going some on. Some humans would have to know about it. Some humans would have to keep the secret. Yes, you're absolutely right. And that group yeah. would be very, very, very small because you're talking about a, an, a, an idea that would be really be no different than uh, the whole Neo Matrix thing. 
you know, you know the line is like, you know, we don't free minds after a certain age. Yeah, you're damn right you don't. Um, I think the Apollo 12 astronauts, by the way, for, or the Apollo 11 astronauts were, uh, were told initially. It's like, oh, yeah, here's what you're going to be doing and here's why. And they just turned into freaking recluses. Oh, my God, they were horrible. They drank. They didn't do public appearances. They just hid from everywhere. I mean, look at the international press conference. Do some people, human beings, yes, need to know? Yes. Uh, are they aliens that are running the place? I don't know. Or like, who I mean, is making the simulation? Though? Who's making it? Yeah, like, old, like there's, there's an older. Seems, how about this? Like, an old, there's some entity running this. Show. An older version of us, um, humanoid, but uh, you know, as far as who there, I don't know. The people, they're way. It's one of it's one of the questions we've gotten every once in a while. And very few people actually ask this, Just which thinking. is, if we're not the first people to rent this apartment. Then how many version? How many versions have there been, and who were the first? You know, are we talking about the the first group that was here when Pangaea, you know, the supercontinent was around, or are we talking about the people that actually built the superstructure? And did they build the superstructure and then come in? I don't know, don't know, and and really nobody knows because that's the the great part of the secret is that again, true power. If you're really really good at power, nobody knows who you are. You keep them guessing. You keep them jumping around. So people point, oh, it's the Vatican. Oh, it's the Masons. Oh, it's the, you know, it's this group. And that okay, is so done. But it is a human-like group that, are, are they in the dome or out of the dome? You know? Like, for, for instance, are, are they able to sort of like... Ex like Excellent question, which is, uh, you know, because I had a chance, oh, wow, it's been some years now. Um, are they in here with us or are they, can they move freely about? Well, whoever built it, I think obviously can can go freely, you know, or can can go come and go. But can previous civilizations come and go? I don't think so. I don't. I think there's rules in place. Uh, okay. Meaning, but they're older, elsewhere. Where else would they go? You know, like where? Yeah. Are they where are they now? Probably subterranean. Remember, you know, you don't need much to do it. Uh, our civilization, ninety-five percent of our population lives between what sea level and a mile. So even if you had a cave system that was 10 miles high. I mean, that's as high as commercial airlines. So you could put all sorts of people down there, but they do have rules. I, I That I know. I mean, the, I, the sky is freaking crawling with them. You can take night vision binoculars and watch them all day long. The question is, why aren't they landing? The, the, lots of people said, why aren't they landing on the White House lawn? It's like, yeah, I think there's some rules in place, kind of like the prime directive type deal. I know that's going into the sci-fi thing, but why wouldn't it apply? Which is, I don't think you can influence directly what's happening down here whoever's on the surface who's, there, who's ever running around can't mess with them too much so and if you have any doubt of that look up the most fantastic ufo public sighting of all time was not a roswell it was the 1561 nuremberg event brilliant two huge armadas duke it out over nuremberg on a beautiful cloudless april day and then a third faction comes in and busts it up do you know how many questions that thing raises? It's like, okay. And they did, I mean, remember, there weren't any cameras, but they drew the whole thing. They were there for like an hour doing stuff. They, there was science fiction wasn't even a reference. They thought it was religious in nature. It's like, okay, why were these two guys fighting? Who is this third group? Were they the cops? Were they the UN? And why did it take them an hour to get there? And why'd they run from them? It was, nobody talks about it. And you look it Wait, up, did, it's, it's a great did you, wiki. Did you say, hold on, did you say 1561? Yeah. Right. Uh... Yeah, I'm skeptical about that uh, in the same way that I'd be skeptical about the resurrection of Christ. I, we, there, are, there are a lot of witnesses to that, uh, and yet it seems like most... Not an entire... Okay, first off, the resurrection of Christ, and I won't, we won't get into the biblical side, that was 1,500 years earlier. This was a major city in Europe, again, on a cloudless April day, and there was the entire town. They were just sitting there with their toast and schnitzenglub and going... What the hell's going on? They had no reference. And they, everyone was just sketching the whole thing. It's gorgeous. So if you're saying, oh, it didn't happen. Okay, fine. It didn't happen. But there was a lot of people. That, it's in their museum. Wonderful newspaper on it. Oh, by the way, they printed in a newspaper. There is no sketch of Christ doing anything. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, what's this event called again? Uh, 1561 Nuremberg event. Now, hold on. So... so uh... Have you ever uh, been inside an airplane? Oh, why? Because I've seen the curve? Is well, that what you're going to follow just, it up I'm, with? Well, I'm just curious of what you've observed if you've been in an airplane. I have flown just about everywhere. And for that, I'm going to send you... You're going to like this. 
just for you. Because I get this every once in a while. Because the comment section, remember, I've been seeing this for the last five years. Like, haven't you ever been in an airplane? I'm not saying that's the attitude you were using because you weren't. But, in fact, I can post a link probably here. Can you see? Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just curious to know. Yeah, I got this. No, 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 no. I respond with this. Because everyone says, like, haven't you seen the curve from an airplane? Because I've seen the curve from an airplane. I've seen it from a balloon. I've even seen it from the beach and all things in between. It's like, really? Okay, well, here's Neil deGrasse Tyson, one of your gods for lack of a better term neil tyson on stage yelling about the felix bumgardner red bull jump that was done a few years ago if you remember that went up to 130,000 feet the guy jumps out red bull claps their hands and we see these super exaggerated uh curvature right and neil tyson helped us in this case he said he thought that was scientifically dishonest now granted red bull wasn't trying to be scientific they were trying to sell beverages but he said he goes at 130,000 feet, and he was very clear about this, and you can watch it when, whenever you get the chance. You absolutely cannot see the curve of the earth. The earth. You are not high enough. So why did Red Bull say they could? And why do, does everybody say they can see it from an airplane? And why does everybody say they can see it from the beach? And this is straight out of Orwell. It's not that you see it, it's that you want to see it. I put a challenge out there for, what, four years now? I said, if you see a curve from the airplane, you take a picture of it, put it on your laptop, hold a straight edge up to it. If that thing is still curved, you send it to me. I will quit Flat Earth tomorrow. You know how many images I've gotten? Zero. Absolutely zero. And also, you got to remember, Neil Tyson. Is he wrong? Because he is your spokesperson on media. Literally the most popular scientist in the world. He is your spokesperson. He says straight up. Felix Baumgartner did not see the curve. No civilian can see the curve. Ever, 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 ever. So. Okay, so but now, but still though, this sounds kind of like a tautology though. This sounds like there's no way that this can be disproven because even if we go to, even if we use a spaceship and we go as high as we possibly can yeah. uh, to the International Space Station, the moon, the tip of the dome, we hit the wallpaper at the, at the edge of the right. dome, or whatever right, right. It is, and we see a curve. It seems to me that your retort would be, well, that's part of the simulation. No, no, not at all. No, 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 no. There's, there is no, for whatever reason, there is no curve built into this thing. It's like our simulations. Remember, every game that's out there, every simulation, I don't care if it's entertainment or, or um, military, like Fortnite or Minecraft or GTA or whatever, it's built on an absolute cake box. I mean, it is absolutely, it's not just, it's not just flat, it's freaking square because, you know, computers can't draw circles. So it's it's absolutely square with a with a skybox system around it. You know, it's all it's all right angles all the way around. So no, no. In fact, the people have come come to me, and I know we we don't have tons of time, but I got to get this out. Which is, uh, is there anything you could do to convince me that it, it's a ball? And by the way, we remember we don't say round. We uh, we say globe or sphere or ball because there's lots of things that can be round. And uh, yeah, there's two things. Real, real easy. As a matter of fact, it's really, really weird that we haven't seen this. And one would be take any 4K camera, put it on a capsule of a rocket, point it down towards the launch pad, launch that sucker off, and don't hit pause, don't hit edit, don't hit anything, and let that thing, you know, the Earth form into a ball as it's leaving orbit. It's never happened in the history of space travel. Ever. That footage does not exist, which is impossible, but that's fine. Show me that that'd be the first thing. But if it's like, well, that's, you're never going to get that. You're never going to get permission, blah, 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 space rules and all this other fun stuff. It's military. It's like, all right, fine. Something on the ground. Somebody asked me, it's like, well, you're never going to approve it unless you go into space. I okay, go, okay, there's something you could do on the ground, which would help a great, great deal. And you know, it's what I call the spacesuit challenge, which is loan me a spacesuit. Put me in a vacuum chamber, any university vacuum chamber. Remember, this is not a tethered G-force suit. This is an Apollo type, you know, backpack space suit, right? Been flawless. Never had a problem with these damn things in 50, 60 years. Except for the guy that almost drowned. I don't want to talk about that. Put me in a freaking vacuum chamber. Pull the switch. Tell me what happens. Because you got to remember that space suit is doing something that completely defies thermodynamics. Which is thermodynamics says pressure, non-pressure has to be a barrier, has to exist. That's why when you blow a balloon, let it go, it flies off. In fact, the, the, the challenge I put to anyone is um, if there's a vacuum chamber above you right now, 
for example, let's say, and you have a valve right above you, right? It doesn't even have to be that big. You pop it. What happens? It equalizes. It's not like the movies. It's not like, oh, we only got two minutes of air left. Get the duct tape. It's not like that. It's instant. It's violent. There's all sorts of great experiments I could show you where they crush everything or have things explode because it's so fast. Well, that's a problem for us because why didn't the air stay in your room instead of going upstairs? Well, because the vacuum overcame. The vacuum was stronger than gravity. And you probably see where I'm going with this. When you go outside, why is our atmosphere still here? And your first knee-jerk reaction is going to be gravity. I go, mean the same gravity that couldn't hold the air in your room? The exact same gravity? Outside, it's fine. Inside your room, no. And remember, we're not talking about a valve outside. We're talking about the bleeding edge of space. Where is the bleeding edge of space and what happens? Science cannot explain this. They can't. Where, where atmosphere ends and space begins, what happens there? What is it? Sorry, I go off and rants. Again, remember, I do this all the time. <laughs> okay, so just to be clear here, like, like about the conspiracy, though, like yeah. people in power are hiding this because they they're think afraid that of it would be everything. it would it would be too disruptive for our society yeah, it's it's not what they could gain well i mean you could gain some things from it but it's, it's what you could lose you would lose control of potentially the people and and I, i've got to throw the religion thing in here just just for the heck of it which is if one of the rules of power is there can never be somebody above you that can be by that someone can get to so if you're the, the government, if you're the powers that be, and somebody, and it's like, oh yeah, by the way, we have no idea who built this world. Well, that immediately diminishes your credibility, your authority. And people all of a sudden be like, yeah, we're not going to listen to you as much <laughs> because we want to talk to those guys, right? And, you know, again, a whole new church system will, will start up because of that. It would be, look, I wouldn't do it. And I'm a conspiracy guy. I wouldn't do it. But it seems like it's, again, we're being helped. You know, YouTube has promoted us way more than I thought. And the Google search engines did not, it did not even begin to slow us down. And they could have. So we're, so, it's, this is happening for a reason. Okay, so people in power are, right, like wanting to keep this a secret in order to keep their position of power. And they're worried about seeming undermined if the, if the earth is radically different, sort of. Yep. And, yep. and like, so why are you doing what you're doing, though? Like, if you said you wouldn't tell people, then like, it seems like you are kind of on, on a mission to, to sort I, of get people to know. I wouldn't then. In 1960, I absolutely agree with every decision they made up until now. But as, as said, I said in the documentary, it's like, look, I'm not doing this. This thing just happened. I, I was actually just minding my own business. I was doing nothing of this stuff. I didn't. I didn't post any YouTube videos. I didn't have any blogs. I didn't have anything. I was just sitting, sitting in my condo in Colorado, having some wine and some popcorn. I'm watching movies every once in a while, going on the internet. And I saw this thing. It's like, this is annoying. I can't solve this on my own. And so you know what? I'm going to go the other way. And that's what I did. So and then again, they just turned into this snowball to where look it's, it's just taking me it's like an amusement park ride for me it's just taking me wherever it's going i don't want right, to but, but you're publishing books and, and making documentaries uh, so, so you clearly you person. want other people to know so what's no what's no no, no. I, it, seriously if i ever live long enough we'll see after the end of this year um <laughs> if i live long enough to write an autobiography it's literally gonna be called unsolicited because i never had to pick up a phone that's the part that staggers most people. The, you know, the, everyone in our circles is just people kept calling me. It's like, oh, hey, you know, can, can we turn your clues into a book? Okay, do I have to do anything? No. Hey, documentary team. Hey, commercial in Australia. Hey, conferences. Hey, you want to open a festival in Sweden? Okay. I have no idea what the hell's happening. I had people coming to me that they were pitching ideas to all sorts of people. And they're saying, how long did it take you to, to, to get these guys to do it? It's like, what are you talking about? I have no, I had no idea what I was doing. I'm just I'm just along for the ride. Seriously. Well, that's 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 nice, and I I hope that it continues to be cozy for you as as. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't want to keep doing this. You, well, I mean, you I, could stop. Yeah, you could stop doing that your radio show and and making the YouTube, YouTube videos. It, like, hey, if somebody if if somebody can shut this thing down academically, I'd love to do it. I, the the challenges have been put out there to just about every physicist you can think of. We FedExed everybody and said, kill this thing. Kill it. Kill it dead. And nobody could. 
Neil what? Tyson will not debate. Michio Kaku won't talk to us. Brian Cox, he's just arrogant. And, uh, and blah, blah. remember, a lot of scientists, you guys, are, you're lucky. Most, most people in science, it is utterly beneath them. They cannot even fathom how to even talk about it. Because it's like, if you believe in this, again, again, not to go into the whole Dunning-Kruger thing, which I know they mentioned in the documentary, that just pisses me off. By the way, the Dunning-Kruger thing, you literally took a childhood insult. You're too dumb to know how dumb you are, and you turn it into a PhD thesis? Oh my god. How does that even work? How does that happen? Can I repeat, ask which uh, physicist did you say was arrogant? Oh, Brian Cox. Oh, I thought you were but saying that's, Kaku. Oh, no, not Michio. No, Michio Kaku is different. He hates conspiracy people. Oh my god. He, if you are into any conspiracies, he just gets angry. He absolutely does, but no, Brian Cox, he's just British. It's that whole English thing. He's, yeah. he's awful. Well, I, 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 I thought I was hoping that someone would confirm my bias against Michio Kaku since the one time I met him and asked him to sign something, but I didn't have his book and I asked him to sign something else he wouldn't sign. Oh, and he wouldn't sign it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't, no, it wouldn't surprise me. No, no, watch some interviews that he's done. Um, he, he gets, it's weird. If somebody starts challenging him, it, there's some arrogance there too, um, but Brian, he's different. But Michio, I mean, when he when you push against him, he'll immediately it's like, wait, are you in a conspiracies? And if you say yes for anything, you are dead to him. <laughs> it's like, he, he just changes gears. Anyway, what else you got? What I find is really interesting, though, is that when I think of people in your community, I'm generally thinking of people who believe that this is biblical and thus they have to prove it for some kind of religious reason, mm, some yeah. kind of religious presupposition. But yeah. you seem unique in that it has nothing to do with a presupposed religious belief. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting you'd mention that because I didn't know. In fact, when I was writing the clues, I did get pressure from the Christian community to address it. So by the time I got to like clue seven, eight, eight or nine, or maybe 10, the, um, the Christian community said, you got to stop dancing around the, the God issue. And there are, yes, at least... You're right in that regards. There's at least half of our community are strong right-wing Christian, at least half. And as a matter of fact, I have seen a number of pastors use it as a recruiting tool. And they've told me as much where they said, they, we've never seen anything bring people back into spirituality as much as this thing does for the obvious reasons, which is like, well, if it's a structure, then it was built, it was created by something. Yeah, it's like okay, and, and that's that's where they go with it. Um, for me, uh, I didn't. Yeah, I was I was raised Christian, but I got into the tech field and did proprietary software training for years and years. And so, you know, if you're in the tech field, church is not exactly high on your list. And when I got into this, I will say, granted, I I still don't go back to church, but I I have a newfound respect actually for all religions. Believe it or not, I, I can't. I cannot come down on any of them. You know, the five major houses. I can't. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, yeah. I, I get it. I get it. So, anyway, I just find it so. Uh, what I find interesting though is you. You mentioned you, just to harp on this God issue for a little bit. Yeah. Um, I find it extraordinarily unlikely. It's usually pretty unlikely that people who are raised without a religious tradition come yeah. to one later in life. It generally doesn't really happen. It happens sometimes, which is usually the, can be the result of broken lives, or they have, or, a, or they need some kind of hope, but or or they're all of a sudden put in a situation where they're surrounded by religious people. Yeah, right. So this, these kinds, of, but your situation sounds like such an anomaly. If you weren't raised with this, and it's very unpopular. Yeah, and there's no there's no social forces bringing you into it. There's only social forces trying to push you out of it. Yeah, that seems yeah. so fascinating. That I, you're and, and this vehement about it. And thank you, by the way. I've been called by a few people an anomaly, and I don't take that as an insult in, in a stretch because I still don't know exactly why this is happening. Yeah, no, because even the Westboro Baptist Church, even they have a small community within themselves that's reinforcing this idea. Yeah. You were entirely unique at this. <laughs> well, I, again, I I don't I don't know why it, it happens the the way it's happening. Uh, I, I I don't have an answer for it, only that there have doors and windows have opened for me 
without any coaxing at in fact i didn't even know they were there type type deals to where again people have called me and and things have happened uh, the the thing in australia perfect example where 10 it's like oh they call me up and they say oh hey can you do a commercial for a mobile phone app thing down in melbourne it's like what and then they said you got you can you be here in 10 days it's like okay here's you know we'll send you plane fedex your plane tickets and when i got there i knew nothing you know i sat you know two days said my lines and um only later did i find out that people some of the people in that company were part of our our community i there's a line i use 90 percent of our community is in the closet absolutely in the closet they will not come out because of the peer pressure is just too much for them and there's a great line um if you watch ever watch james bond movies which i i just tickled me where he goes the first thing you, you there was an evil group specter and he goes the first thing you need to know is know about us is we have people everywhere and we do I've run into people just, and they're so quiet about it. They'll like bump me and it's like, you know, throw me a hand sign. It's like, yeah, man, totally down with the flat. <laughs> like, seriously. I mean, all sorts of people. And I was like, okay, great. So now it's a cult. <laughs> it's great. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm glad the media hasn't jumped on that yet. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for that day. But we have, but again, we haven't burned anything down. We haven't, we haven't blown anything up. We haven't shot anybody. So wonderful. I, I would have thought something would have happened in five years, but apparently it's a fairly friendly group. Anything else I can do for you? Well, there are probably a lot of questions on my mind that I can ask, and that's why I probably would uh, like to have you back sometime in the future. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Think, think of stuff. I mean, you. I mean, thank you by the way for reading uh, the first book. It's wonderful. Not, not. Did you, did you read the online version, or did you get a printed copy? To be fair, I skimmed the online version. <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's all right. Um, yeah, there's there's tons of resources. There's all sorts of people. You know, anybody that you want to talk to. If, if you run into somebody online, it's like, oh, yeah, he might be interesting to talk to. I think I know them and, or know somebody that knows somebody. So, yeah. No, thank you so much, uh, Mark. Uh, thank it's you. been one of the most interesting conversations <laughs> I've had in a long time. So. And, 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 thank, and thank you guys, by the way, for not... I, I can, you know, I could tell by some of the furled brows, you know, that I'm, I'm going into areas. It's like, oh God, <laughs> this is, this guy is going to, this is going to be horrible. But at the same time, thank you for not, uh, you know, going into the, the, you know, straight up digging in your heels and, and going into attack mode. Cause you'd be surprised how many, how many times that happens to me. We do try our best to give people the, the fair chance to, to say they're shot well, thank basically you. on, yeah. You know. Thank you. Yeah. It's awfully nice. Right. Um, yeah. If if um, yeah. If, do do I do I plug anything? Or are you guys gonna do uh, it? No, oh, sure.